it became so like sensitive to a lot of people and I'm like okay I don't want to do this to people I don't want to add to all of this by going to talk I don't and I don't talk about things like this in public before him there was somebody else that I married it didn't work out I did, nobody heard my voice I did talk about it that one passed quietly because as a matter of fact I didn't believe yeah you had gotten married yeah it lasted eight months biggest mistake of my life because the guy was an amazing guy but he was my friend my best friend and religion is what caused that problem that made us marry when we were not supposed to be married we were supposed to be very good friends because as my friend he was awesome hmm. but as a married couple mm-mm, it didn't work we just messed it up and we knew it so when we went our separate ways we were like out of love and respect for each other let's just leave it we don't talk about it we don't mess anything up we just leave it as is so that we can still say hello are you okay how are yeah. you and that's how that ended that's why I don't also want to make this negative or messy because of the way it all started I'm, I'm not that kind of person that would come and defend myself because a lot of things were said people blamed me for this last one when they don't know what happened oh Nami Nami do this and Stella did that Stella did that it's, it's God paying her back I'm like yeah I don't know the God that I serve <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of that. Yeah. It's karma, it's karma. Yeah. I say you don't know the God that I serve and you don't know what he knows because he knows the truth. He knows the things that you don't even say because he's the one that knows the end from the beginning. So for him to keep blessing me and taking care of me, I don't think people understand the meaning of karma because it's, it's in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Teju is a lot, but... Um, yeah, so I mean... I'm glad. Uh, before I let us move away from this, why do you say religion <laughs> made you get married? I have my own things about religion to, to when I think about how religion has messed a lot of people up in marriage and all of that. But in this case, what exactly uh, happened? Okay, so we were friends, very good friends. We were very close friends. And we were not sure if we were ready to date or we should just leave it as is. But we started attending a church together. And he was choir director. I was in the choir and all of that. And of course, the leaders of the church felt like this is wrong. You know, both of you are together and you are church workers. You have to set a good example. You can't do this. You can't be single like this and be, you know, you will be tempted to, you know, do things. The body will born. Like, yes. <laughs> so you can't do. And, you know, when you throw yourself into church, because at that point in my life, I was having issues with my spiritual self. I was more in my religious work than my spiritual work. So it was all about the church and what the church expected as opposed to my relationship with God, my relationship with Christ. So I was following church like blindly, you know. So when they say things like this, you don't want to offend the church that you represent you stand on the pulpit you carry the microphone to represent God and sing and people are moved by the Holy Spirit and then they tell you no this is wrong you can't be doing this here when you are not you know married let's let's do this for you and then immediately before I knew it we had marriage counseling session for they told us we are set date you have to do this thing quickly and myself you know, because he wasn't ready at the time. In fact, by when he proposed, he did it so nicely because he knew me so well. Emotions just got in the way. I just said, yes, what make do do am you know me more than anybody else. I know you, so let's just do it. Church said we should do it. Okay, fine. I just said yes. No plan, no. We didn't get to know each other in the other way. Because we knew each other as great friends. But by the time we got into the marriage and saw that we were not compatible as a couple. But we we're great friends, and a lot of people don't know that there's a difference, and so that um, incompatibility just messed a lot of things up. And we're like, What know. church was this? <laughs> Let me not throw them because I know your church. I mean, well, I think I know your church. This particular one, I don't know if you know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know if you know it. He's popular, but I don't want to mess things up. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's leave that now. So I have a longish type question for you. Wow, let me yeah. drink water. <laughs> I have a longish type question for you because I, I want to lay the the foundation for the question. Okay, this is perhaps the pièce de résistance. So, I have concluded that if my marriage were to ever break up, if I were to ever divorce the woman to whom I'm married right now, the mother of my kids, the mm-hmm. twins, mm-hmm. I, I have concluded that my conclusion will be that mm. I just wasn't meant to get married. 
my conclusion will never be that I married the wrong person. Because as far as was humanly possible before I married that woman, I did to the best of my ability. I did everything. I, I prayed, I fasted, I counseled, I read books, I went to seminars. I did everything. In fact, just to sow trust in you, the way you're sowing trust in me with this interview, I'm going to tell you something that my wife doesn't even know. So I'm going to tell it to you first and by extension the whole world. Uh, during a period of one month, I went through my wife's phone, then my girlfriend's phone, three times without her knowing and I went through her phone on the instructions of my father. Wow. Back then we used to use Blackberry phones. Mm -hmm. So when she came to see me, I used to live in an apartment in Victoria Island. She'd, she'd be cooking or she'd go downstairs to do something. She'd be charging her phone. I'd sneak off and I'd check her Blackberry messages. Dad said do it three times. First time, I saw nothing untoward. Great. Second time, nothing untoward. Third time, then I went to tell my dad. Then dad said, great. Now that you found nothing, do not ever check that girl's phone again. Don't ever check that woman's phone ever. Not now, not when you get married, not for the rest of your life. Mm. Invest trust in that woman and your marriage. Right. So the point being that I did all of that. So if we ever divorce, God forbid, it won't be that I married the wrong person. I'll just conclude immediately. Mm. I wasn't supposed to get married because mm. I don't believe marriage is for everybody actually. So I wonder, do you feel like that sometimes? And, and I ask this being that, consider that all of this started mm -hmm. because life happened. Yeah. The only reason your first marriage ended was because Jai Jai Aboderi. He died. He died. Yeah. But the way people were like white on rice, like beans and bread, like groundnut and gari with ice block. I'm sure that if Baba J were still alive, you all will still be married. Yes. You wouldn't be this person who had done it three times. Yes. So life happened the first time. Yes. The second time, you were probably reeling from all of that. Life was happening. You know, bad decisions. I can understand that people pressuring you. Yeah. That happened. This third one, this guy walked away. So at, at, at this point, are you like, man, I have, you know what? I'm done. I have given, you, I'm done with this thing. Or are you like, you know what? I believe in love. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to keep trying. I don't care how long it takes. So here's my problem. Because there's a problem. Hi. Uh, thank you for watching this video thus far. I know at this point you want to keep enjoying the video and you don't want me interrupting, but this is as far as this comes. So first of all, again, thank you. Uh, so at this point, you have three options. The first thing to do will be to subscribe to our podcast and then listen to the entire interview uninterrupted. So you can do that. Just go to the Ted You Baby Face Deep Dive podcast wherever you get your podcast from or secondly you could become one of our members one of our youtube members you know just subscribe to the membership below our members get to watch the full videos uninterrupted okay or third if you do none of those two you could wait around for a couple of days for us to keep posting the clips of this interview but i can assure you that we're not going to post everything we're just going to keep posting clips here and there obviously of course, I'd prefer that you do number one and number two. Subscribe to the podcast, download and listen to the audio and also become one of our members. That's how you show your support for us. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wait for the next one.